In episode 2 of Mushoko Tensei, we see Rudy and Rakti perform a spell called Cumulo Nimbus. The name of the spell tells us a bit about what to expect, because Cumulus Nimbus clouds are often associated with thunderstorms and contain immense amounts of water and energy. So that means Rudy and Roxy are summoning a thunderstorm. But how does that work? Well, thunderstorms form by warm, humid air coming into contact with cool, less stable air. What happens then is that the warm air begins to rise into the cool air. When this happens, the warm air begins to expand and cool without transferring much of its energy into the cool air in a process called adiabatic expansion. The water inside of the warm air then begins to condense and form water droplets. Since the air is now cooling, it begins to fall back down and begins to warm up again. As this happens, it goes back up into the cool air and more water vapor condenses. This is called a convection cell. If this happens enough, you begin to form clouds. If there's enough moisture and temperature gradient, you can see larger and larger water droplets begin to form. These water droplets eventually reach a mass where they're too big to stay suspended and they begin to fall as rain. While this is happening, the small frozen droplets of water and the thunderstorm start to rub together and exchange electrons. As this happens, a charge begins to build up in the thundercloud, and when the charge difference between the thunderclouds and the ground is large enough, the electrons begin to overcome the resistance in the air and discharge toward the ground. This is called lightning. Really intense storms called supercells are made in a similar manner but also contain a rotational component. This is due to a large pressure gradient creating horizontal wind shear against the high level winds, which then creates a horizontal rotation. The warm air that's rising creates powerful updrafts, which align the rotation vertically as shown in a simulation clip by Lay Orof. So basically, Rudy's bringing warm, moist air and bringing it into contact with cooler air and mixing them together. The storm he creates with his cumulonimbus spell seems consistent with what we would expect from a supercell, especially with the rotational component. It's interesting to note that we do not see any tornadoes, even though they are common in supercell storms. It's possible that Rudy could use the spell to create them if he wished. In normal supercells, the rotation is caused by natural wind shear, but Rudy rotating his wand implies perhaps a different cause. We believe that he may be rotating the air himself in order to form a supercell in any condition. This is impressive because not only is he performing work to heat and add water to some of the air, but he's also creating opposing wind fronts. In reality, a spell like this would require fine control over both water, wind, and fire elements. So how powerful is this magic? Well, according to a paper published in 1951 in the Journal of Meteorology, which we'll link below, the total work done by a thunderstorm against the environment is about one petajoule, or equal to 250 kilotons of TNT. This is more than 10 times as powerful as the nuclear bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And it's not clear if Rudy can channel this sort of energy directly, but his spells can certainly have an enormous impact on the environment.